Praise the name of the Lord. Um, just two or three things and then we'll get to the night. First, I want us to truly, truly, truly honor your pastor an adorable, adorable man of God. God bless you, sir. And your lovely wife, God bless you. Hallelujah. Um, he, he left me a promise right from the airport. He said, I will feel at home. And I'm telling you, promise made and promise kept. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And I, I want to thank you for this. The representative of the zonal superintendent, is that correct? God. Oh, the, the district overseer. Thank you, sir. God give you. I'm sorry. And for every other man and woman of God here, God bless you. The amazing choir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. And I want to especially thank these adorable people. I don't know them. Very disciplined people. Very disciplined. Very disciplined. God bless you. We'll be very brief tonight, and I know that our lives will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Can you cry out your heart to the Lord in one minute? Those of you outside, I see people outside, lift your voice and just cry your heart and say, Father, visit me tonight. Go ahead and pray. Lord, turn my life around. Are you praying? my eyes, O oh God, change my life. Hallelujah. We're going to pray one more prayer. Lord, open my eyes. Understanding is a big miracle. Lift your voice and cry. Open my eyes, O oh God, that I may see. Open my eyes that I may see. that I may see. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Spirit of the living, we are gathered tonight because we believe that you are able to change our lives. We have come from far, we have come from near to sit at your feet and to learn the ways of the Spirit. I pray, O oh God, that within the few minutes we have to share, grant us understanding. Let there be the hearing of faith and the working of miracles. In the name of Jesus, I pray that everyone who has come here will live transformed, will live changed. In the name of Jesus. God bless you and please be seated. One more time, it's my joy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. We're going to be sharing very briefly along the lines of your theme. And let me just say a few things very quickly. Please, if in while I'm teaching... Um, there's someone under the anointing close to you just help them you can just help them so they don't injure themselves just hold uh, the person so that they can feel comfortable I know the ushers are trained to do that but you might just need to help them thank you Jesus every time I have the opportunity to teach or travel 
one of the things that people expect i guess is because of the nature of my call and assignment is um the demonstration of the spirit signs wonders impartations and all of this and as i talk with men of god and i talk with people one of the first questions they ask me is what is the secret to the anointing upon your life what is the secret behind the things that the lord does and and is doing in and through your life um, i have learned that the anointing is very important i have learned that the fire of god upon the life of a man upon the life of a pastor upon the life of a businessman upon the life of a career person that the fire of god truly is what makes the difference and as we explore today and tomorrow i like your heart to truly be open we're going to be very brief because there are teachings that are rather an experience are we together now you you it's, it's not it's not so much of a lecture you are just guided into that reality am i doing something wrong the sound okay thank you and so i know that god is going to help us i believe with all my heart like one of the pastors said that it would not just be a name that it was a theme of a conference fresh fire and when we are done we say congratulations let's prepare for 2019 but that it will be a remarkable encounter that someone will know that from this day you can date it the impact will be so strong you will not need to write it so you forget it will be impossible to forget hallelujah there are days in everyone's life that you can always make reference to maybe the day a tragic event happened a day you got married a day your date of birth and all of that and i pray that this day will be one of such days in the name of jesus today and tomorrow we'll be looking at a few secrets in the kingdom and tonight i want to share with us very powerfully on one of the secrets that can help men experience the fire of god experience the power and the possibilities of god upon their lives the results listen carefully please the results that you command in your life is among many factors dependent on the level of the fire and the grace of god that is at work in your life are we together you are not going to tell someone be blessed and he just gets blessed just because you saw from scripture that words carry power it takes more than just what you see that's why many believers you see we make a lot of mistakes because we find truths in scripture and then we think that just because they are found in scripture automatically they will work so we try to engage them and we're surprised that they don't produce the results we expect because you see the spirit of the lord must open your eyes to the dynamics of the workings of every scripture it's like watching someone drive and you cannot drive it looks very simple oh just the accelerator until you are given the car and you find out that a lot was going on that your eyes could not see this is how it is so it's easy to see a man of god tell the sick someone from a wheelchair stand up and he stands up and ask the sons of skiva they came and said we adjure you there was nothing wrong in their construction there was nothing wrong in their expression the only thing that was wrong is a track record in the spirit and the demons knew it they said we know paul we know jesus there is something about the track record they have created but we only see you vocalizing things in the physical there is no track record so it's not just about the speaking it's not just about the oratory there must be an experience with the holy spirit that we must have are we together is god helping us now and so i want to prepare our hearts even as we expect the fire to fall all through scripture when you read through scripture the reference that um, was made while the pastors were having their speech you would notice that fire never fell on bare ground 
Are we together now? Every time fire fell, it came upon something that was expectant. It came upon a sacrifice. It came upon, as it was in the days of Elijah, when it was time for him to command fire from heaven. Listen very carefully. He said, build me 12 altars. There had to be a system in place for the fire to fall. And so tonight, very quickly, I want to teach us on the secret to spiritual power. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Psalm 63. You're my God, and your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You're my King, and your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Psalm 63. O oh God, Thou art my God. This is the Psalm of David. Early will I seek you. That means timing matters in seeking God. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Early will I seek you because it takes time to really find him. Are we together now? He says, my soul thirsted for you. Listen to the expression of David. David is using every faculty of his life to express his hunger and his desperation. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and weary land. Theologically speaking, he was in the desert of Judah. And this was when he was crying out his heart. Are we together now? And the Bible says... A dry and thirsty land where no water is. And what was the object of his pursuit? Verse 2. He says to see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen in the sanctuary. Do you know what he's saying? He's saying every time I went to your house, I saw a dimension of power and glory. It was in your house but not yet in my life. I'm on a project to transfer everything that I see. When I come into your house, I see that as these people were singing, the glory of the Lord filled everywhere. But every time I went back, I saw that my life was dry and empty. So I'm on a project. Oh God, you are not just the God of my church. You are also my God. Early, he says, will I seek you? He says, my soul. This one is not my head again. My soul longs for you. You want to understand this kind of passion, you need to look at a man who is ready to get a lady to marry. Are we together now? Marriage is the closest description to this kind of passion. My soul longs for you. It says to see your power and your glory in my life, reproduce in my life what I saw in church. Must I always run and wait until Sunday before I see the miracles, the power, the glory? What happens when there is someone in my house on Monday who needs what I got on Sunday? Do I have to allow the person to die until Sunday? Oh God, you are my God. Oh, Early will I seek you. My soul longs for you, he says, to see your power in my life. To see your glory in my life. There is a level of hunger. There is a level of desperation. You see, hunger is proof that you are alive. Hunger is proof of health. When people fall sick, among the many things that happen to them is something called the loss of appetite. Are we together? Those outside, if you are with me, say amen. So you find out someone who can devour two or three or four wraps of swallow 
But all of a sudden, this person is knocked down by typhoid. And you can even bring a cup of pap and the person is barely taking it. That means you can track your spiritual progress using the index of hunger. I can know my spiritual health by the level of hunger about God, about his house. That means if at any point I have to drag myself and advise myself to church, it's a sign that there is a spiritual symptom, something is wrong. He said, I was glad, the same David, not I was angry, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go, because there is something about the house of God you don't find in a bank. There is something about the house of God you don't find in a movie theater. The acoustics may be the same. The vocal prowess of the communicators may be the same. But the presence factor, that factor, I was glad when they said unto me. Is God blessing us already? So that there is a measure of passion and hunger. You see, the way... God deals with us is that every time he wants you to know him more, the first thing he does to you is that he brings a bit of the dimension he wants to introduce you to and then he hides it back. It is his system of luring men. He introduces something. So as a man of God, he wants to bring you into the healing ministry. And this is how he will do it. One day you will go for a program. You know that based on your preparation, nothing should happen. It will surprise you that blind eyes will open. You know you are not part of that miracle. You are just standing on stage. That's why they think you are the one. You are as surprised as those being healed. You go back home and say, my wife, what happened? And then the next meeting you go and nothing happens. God says, I'm drawing you. Come and let me show you the secret that makes that realm. Your permanent habitation. That's why the Bible said, Oh, taste. Um, I come from the north. I know you find them here. But where I come from, the people that sell suya for you, when you go to eat, they just cut a little. Does that happen here? Remember, you plan to buy for only 500 naira. That was the initial plan. You advise your wife that there was no time to waste money now. And the man doesn't say, please buy. Mm -mm. He just, he looks for one that is already hot and steamy and just cuts a significant portion and says, taste. I'll let my wife taste. Say, you too, just taste. And as soon as you taste, you will want to pretend it's not nice. And then eventually you will find yourself betraying yourself. And you say, how much is this one? One five. Say, how much will you reduce it? One two. And your wife said, I thought said, you have tasted. And it has increased. That as, as soon as you tasted of that meal, something you did not plan doing, the same way you didn't plan to go on a three-day fast, but he made you to taste of what the healing power can do. And the next thing, you cancel your program and you are locking yourself for three days. And say, Lord, to see your power and your glory in my life. He's calling us deeper, 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 deeper. He's calling you deeper, deeper, deeper. This can be it. Your God is so much bigger than this. Mm. I'm speaking to you. Listen. This can't be it. He is so much. You have allowed a world to let you know that God does not give triplets again. That God cannot give twins again. And you say, God, I know you will give me a job, but small by small, to a point that you have a dream of what God wants to do and you cast it. Because you have been so far from God, your faith cannot receive what he's showing you. And so he creates a system and says, my son, what happened? My daughter, what happened? He calls you. 
through hunger exposes you to a bit of what she can do in your life and so one day you are sitting quietly and from monday tuesday wednesday favor just comes and on thursday everything closes and he said what did i do that everybody favored me every day and god says come and i will show you that was the strategy he used to attract moses remember that moses was trained to be the pharaoh of egypt are we together now he had a half brother called Ramesses. And now Moses is banished from Egypt. And then for 40 days, 40 years, the Bible says he was tending the sheep of Jethro, his father-in-law. One day, Moses looks and suddenly he sees a bush. Now, Moses was not strange to supernatural activities. Don't forget that Egypt was the center of Scientology and witchcraft. And you, you didn't bamboos an average Egyptian with just some spooky things. They had seen gods. They had won battles. They had seen cat castles built by the power of divination. They were not naive. Moses wrote books before he was born again that is still being used today in occultic circles. He wrote books from the abundance of the lecture they gave him before he met the God of Abraham. So Moses was not an, is not an ignorant man at all. But on this day, when destiny was about to call him, Moses is tending his father-in-law's sheep and he sees something he never saw in Egypt. That a bush, Kai, this is my God, eh? That a bush is on fire, yet the bush, the leaves, does not burn. Scientists talk to me. What is the secret behind that? And the Bible says, listen carefully, God kept using it to lure him. And Moses would not pay attention. But the Bible says, Moses said, listen, I will turn aside, O oh, taste and see. I will turn aside and see this great sight. This sight that was not captured in my experience in Egypt. The Bible says, when the Lord saw that he turned aside, he told him, he said, now, now that you have turned to me, my first assignment is take off your shoes. Your shoe is a representation of all you have known about the gods. So don't add me as one of them. Remove those experiences. I'm about to reintroduce myself. When you come to God, you come with your prior philosophies. You come with all kinds of things. Your father was a herbalist. And so you may think that God is just another kind of herbalist who is higher than the one your father. And you say, take off your shoes. Your shoe is a symbol of your experience. Take it off. Because where you stand now is holy ground. The bush is speaking to a man. And yet the bush is not consumed. And Moses is standing in awe of that sight. Then Moses says, what, so what am I here for? He says, I'm sending you to the same place that scared you away that you ran. But I'm not sending you the way you left. There is something I'm going to do in your life. And he says, I'm sending you to Pharaoh, that wizard of a man, that when you go, tell him, thus saith a strange God called the God of the Hebrews. Let my people go. And Moses said, who are you? Who are you? What will I tell Pharaoh? Pharaoh is a stubborn man. And he says, Moses, you have asked a question that is important. Because in that question is an encounter. God did not answer Moses yet. He says, I am that I am. Is that a name? If your child were to answer a name, I am that I am in school, what do you think will happen to that child? That they call Stephen, they call Ronke, then they say, I am that I am. And you say, present, sir. Is that a name? Let me tell you the explanation of what he said. Until Moses met the God of the Hebrews, every God was limited and dimensional. Every God was like a consultant with specialty. That's why the nation of Egypt had thousands of gods. Because they needed to attract as many dimensions that would support their victory. They needed gods 
that will help them to have good products from the farm. They needed gods that would manipulate the stars and the consolation to give them victory in time of war. They needed gods of fertility. So they need every time Egypt heard of a god somewhere, they would fight the people, kill them and carry the gods to Egypt and say, now we are adding gods. And the more we have these gods, the more we have results. And then Moses said, so which is your specialty? That's what he was saying. What, will, uh, what God will I go and tell my half-brother sent me? Because he can say we have, I'm the God of fertility. And Pharaoh says, no, we already have that one. So you are not invited. And, Mo, and God said, Moses, so that you don't classify me as those many gods. I am that I am. Hmm. It's a name. Go and tell Pharaoh to search. That means... I am not limited by dimensions. I am infinite. Alpha. Omega. Every other manipulation you see of God is an attempt to be me. I am that I am. He said, go and tell Pharaoh, I am has sent you. So when Moses had all of those encounters, Moses goes to Pharaoh and his half-brother is happy to see him after so many years. Had now become the pharaoh of Egypt. And he said, have you come to reconcile? We can still accept you back. He said, no, I've come as a different man. Thus said a God I met in the bush called I am. Let my people go. And I can imagine Ramesses clapping his hands and saying, wonders shall never end. Moses, is this how bad it became? You would have simply begged and would have rehabilitated you. I am that I am. And Moses said, I'm not talking too long. Let the rod speak. Because the rod also met God. Everything about you must meet God to be useful. Listen, sit down, sit down, sit down. We're talking. If your eyes meet God and your account does not meet God, your eyes will grow, but your account will not grow. Moses did not just meet God alone. His rod, the instrument of victory, also met God. So he says, my soul, it is everything that is seeking you. I'm not just seeking you with my brain. I'm not just seeking you with my profession. I'm not just seeking you with my spiritual life. Everything, if it is needed for my victory in destiny, it must meet you. My wife must meet you. My children must meet you. My certificate must meet you. My No, no, no. You can't be my God and not be the God of my certificate. You can't be my God and not be the God of my children. So my soul, everything. Is it not in your Bible that says, as for me and my house? Are we together? Yes. But the starting point, listen very carefully. The starting point was a desperation. Did you know that every day the Holy Spirit continues to hover around our lives and continues to lure us to say, look, my sister, do you not know that out of the family of 13 people, you are the one destined to liberate them? But not at this current level. So I'm luring you. There is something you have to love me more than Sunday to Sunday. Oh Lord, I don't, I don't want to be a pastor's wife. And he says, it's not about a pastor's wife. It's the only formula to be great. You have to seek me above the average man. You see, there is this deception that we have in society now. Our, the Christianity of many people is just an emotional way of bribing themselves into believing they are spiritual. Are we together now? And so we give God passion sufficient enough to take away guilt from our heart. Is it devotion I didn't do this morning? Lord, I read two chapters. You are a witness. I mean, what is there? I had, during the break in the office, we had devotion. So what are you harassing me for, for spiritual growth? And so we believe that anything above the normal hunger and pursuit is left for men of God and pastors. That's why when we see a lady unusually seeking God, a gentleman unusually seeking God, we say, surely, this guy is going to be a reverend very soon. But we agreed earlier on that hunger is proof of health. 
you see parents laugh while they feed their children and they are happy when the child says mommy more they say i'm, I'm happy you when they find out that the appetite is gone, the mother can even lose her appetite because the baby's appetite was lost. So let's start tonight with a real spiritual check. If your hunger for God is not greater than it was last year, it's proof that something is wrong. If your hunger for January is not the hunger you have now, if it's not greater than that which you had before, something is wrong. Please listen to me very carefully tonight. The fire never falls until certain things are in place. The fire is an attestation. The fire is a confirmation. The fire is proof. It's a validation. And so there are things that must happen in the life of a man, in the life of anyone. And one of it is hunger. There must be a hunger for God that drives you to the secret place. There must be a hunger for God that is more than education. Listen carefully. There must be a hunger for God that is more than marriage, more than children, more than job. Young people, let's listen carefully. There is a hunger that must be greater than this hustling to make it. I need to prove to my family members I'm not a failure. Nothing is wrong except that you are looking in the wrong direction. Never try to look for something only God can give you. It's not missing. When you come to him, you will find it. Many of the things we seek can only be gotten by God. A man can receive nothing. The Bible tells us already. That's why we get angry when God carries your prayer points and gives someone else as a gift. A product of intimacy. That the person did not ask for it. But God says, it's a token of my love. Proof that seeking me is profitable. We are gradually losing out on the fervency to seek God. A generation is becoming ashamed of becoming hungry for God our 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 civilization which is very important is doing many things that may not be scriptural because it's making God go out of fashion and sometimes we feel embarrassed to communicate that we're unusually hungry for God because it looks like it's only those who fail in every area of life they reward themselves with a consciousness of eternity so we don't want to be part of that group. I'm an intelligent banker. I'm an intelligent investor. I am a this and that and that. And so I'm not going to mess myself with all this lying down and rolling before God. No, I'm smart. I love God. I will give God all. If it's donation, I will donate. If it's prayer, I will pray. If it's devotion, I will do a morning devotion. But don't harass me with anything unusual. And that's exactly what Satan wants. That is the ingredient to destroy a generation. Because you see, my brothers and my sisters, when the devil wants to destroy you, he uses the same principle God uses to attract you. He also uses hunger. The Bible says that Lot, listen carefully, when Lot separated from Abraham, he didn't go to Sodom. He settled near Sodom. Everybody say near Sodom. Satan kept him close to Sodom. By the time Abraham would go to rescue him, he was in the middle of Sodom. So all that Satan needs to do is to bring what he wants in your life close to you. That's why the Bible says, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand. He's not a wicked man, but just by standing close to them and sitting in the seat of this scornful, you implicate yourself. He said, come out from among them. Don't wait until you are corrupted. It always starts near you before it gets into you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? When God wants to lift you, that possibility is kept near you. And your hunger will determine whether that will become your experience. Your spiritual health is measured not by your ability to sing, not by your ability to fast, not by your ability to pray, not even by your ability to preach. 
that ever increasing intrinsic hunger to say lord i desire you ah a man who loved god said i rather be a doorkeeper lord this is how i'm addicted to anything of you if i'm a doorkeeper in your house is greater than the palace with all of his glory my assignment tonight is to prepare us for the fire you don't prepare for the fire just by fasting my brothers and my sisters there are many fasting giants who do not love god they have only been told that fasting is a formula for power so they quickly endure like you do exercise and from the beginning of that fast the motif is corrupted so in the end of it they may barely get anything it says no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it entered into the heart of any man what god has in store not for prayer warriors not for pastors not for preachers for them that love him there is a realm that is greater than the realm of religious activities there is a realm of genuine passion for god the lord i love you job or no job it's amazing the parameters we use to threaten God for our, co or, um, for our continued loyalty. Lord, I'm giving you from now till December. If a guy does not show up, anything I do, don't blame me. I understand that it's, it's a very sincere cry from a heart that needs to feel like you are moving forward. If someone came to you now and you told him what is your accomplishment in life, and he says, well, I didn't have the privilege to go to school fast. I'm not very wealthy, but I know God. Our generation will say, shame on you. You mean you have no job? But if a young man comes and tells you, I'm not, I'm not against all of these things. I'm a master's holder, just came back from a school abroad. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not into this God thing, but at least I'm, they'll say, it's okay. At least you are, not, you are not exactly so bad. What is there? It's just, you see that. We have... We have institutionalized every other thing. Up. It's a very serious thing I'm saying. When a gentleman comes to meet a lady and says, look, all I have for now is a very sound relationship with God. The lady stands and looks at him in shock and wonder and says, who advised you? That's the first question. Who did you, who, who gave you this counsel of Ahitophel? If you ever find God in your life, it is because everything within you truly sought Him. You've heard me teach it again and again. The Lord taught me, it's called the law of encounter. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. That is the spiritual law that governs men having encounters with God. Encounter just beyond new birth. Paul was speaking to a body of believers who were already saved. My little children in whom I travail, he says, until Christ be formed in you. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13 says, and ye shall seek me. It's not a general thing. It's an individual thing. He says, and you shall find me only if you seek me with all your heart. That means if for any reason you claim you are seeking God and never find him, it is because something within you, there is, there is a betrayal of yourself to yourself. My first call to people every time I have the opportunity to teach them is to make God become a priority. To shake off the things that society has embraced. Every success is nonsense if God is not above it. Meet a man who is about to die and tell him what one wish will you have. He will not say a new estate. I'm not against these things. Please don't get me wrong. He's not going to say more money. He will not say let me quickly complete my PhD. If you ever meet a man at the point of death, he will only cry about one thing. Give me more time. Lord, just give me more time. That was the cry of Hezekiah in chapter 20, 38 of Isaiah. Lord, give me more time. What is everything I have is nonsense if life is God.
we live in a generation right now that makes everything about God look like a nuisance to society from journalists to all kinds of people the moment you are really serious with God this system is designed to hate you they look at you as a nuisance your phone rings and it's a wonderful worship song and you see people who don't know you frowning at you what a beautiful girl wasting her life you have carried this church sin on your head are you Jesus you, you hear them say this and now we are getting very ashamed to a point that you sit down your phone just once and you, you off it quickly and put it on vibration and say don't don't disgrace us in this social gathering Kai, whatever will make me not seek God with all my heart oh God may you never give me it's a prayer I'm praying on stage here whatever level you will ever take me to that will make me that will make you regret blessing me may I never get there is God speaking to us tonight I'm, I'm cultivating a hunger is the true spirit of revival it is what prepares men for fire as the deer panted for listen to what you're singing the water so my that was a man who became a great man in scripture for you alone are my heart's desire and I long a man who loved God had to compose a song to express his hunger and say how do I how do I express my hunger for you oh God it is in the similitude of a deer panting for water now there's all kinds of explanation that the deer runs because of safety regardless of what the reason is that a, that a man can love God enough I hope you know the man talking is not a poor man the man talking is not a failure what more do you look for when you have a house you have a car you have everything because let me tell you my brothers and my sisters if your object for seeking God is anything other than him you will be tired in this life the day you get the car the impetus to seek him will never come the day you now get the wife and now have the twins or triplets you will testify but that's the end of you and God the hunger that prepares men for the power of God at age 12 Jesus was already in the temple when his friends were roaming around he was with the doctors and they looked at him and said what kind of a child are you don't you play you don't have a social life you are too small for this your ambitious thing and Jesus said no to the point that he stayed in the temple and the parents went to look for him they came back they don't give us heart attack please he said don't you know that I should be about my father's business my meat my meat my satisfaction my fulfillment is derived in doing the will of him that sent me doing the will of him that sent me first square please listen to me very carefully you have not seen glory and power and grace until god finds your heart you have not seen favor until god finds your heart you have not seen cars and houses and all these things that people leave God for. When you find a man's heart, you have found everything. It's true. A man can be a CEO, listen carefully, of a company. And everybody can be at the reception hoping to have, even if it's two minutes with him. And the son of that man or the wife can pass all those people and greet them and just open the door daddy not ceo not director not chairman of committee a and b and he runs with his dirty uniform and hugs the father and the father lifts him up 
and the father cannot deny him because the son is not looking for a job the son is looking for his father the rest are looking for favor they are looking for employment they are looking for please connect me to this governor the son is not looking for anything he runs straight to the father so the purer your motive the greater your access that if God vets you and finds out that this thing is not about money, oh, yes, he will give you money, but this one is not about money. This one is not even about anointing. I still tell people today that the formula to the power of God is not very difficult, but it is very difficult. It is not very difficult, but it is very difficult. Because it will demand that every other thing that is your reason for seeking God, it must be laid to rest. And that's very painful. Because we have needs that are obvious. Many of us here are trusting God right now for miracles. We are trusting God that I prophesy upon you. We are trusting God for wonderful things. And you will have that by the grace of God and in the name of Jesus. But you see, my brothers and my sisters, as the Spirit of God moves around this congregation, inside and outside, He's looking for the hearts that love Him, past miracles, past signs, past job, past this. And He looks and comes to one mama seated in this congregation and sees a woman who is saying, Lord, even if I never become anything, let me have the testimony that I love you. And the Spirit of God says, these are the kinds of people I'm looking for that's the reason why you will see people excel in life who based on your parameters should not be and it will pain you and they will tell you God gave it to me he gave it to me as a reward he gave it to me as a reward If I had failed with my life, probably many people would say I was seeking God because my life has failed. Like they say, oh, just serve God. But in this season, Pastor, one of the things that God is doing in the body of Christ is that God is raising people who are extremely successful by every standard and putting his hunger in them so that they can mentor a generation that you can be successful and your hunger can remain. Because for many people, it looks like our generation gives us options. Fail and seek God or succeed and leave God. That's not a theology that is in scripture. Are we together now? We have been indoctrinated that serving God will make us fail in life. So every time God begins to propose a hunger and a passion, we now begin to think, of the things we are going to lose let me tell you this abraham did not lose isaac abraham only brought isaac to his rightful place are we together now every time god demands your isaac is not to kill isaac the goal is so that he will be lord of isaac the average person runs away from god because we know that serving him will cost you and we rather pretend that, Lord, I didn't hear your call than to say, Lord, are you trying to say I'm going to relinquish my job now? How will I eat? Don't you know I'll fail? Lord, are you trying to say I'm not going to have my life my way now because I'm under your government? My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you this. When you seek God with all your heart, when your hunger for God supersedes your hunger for every other thing, you are ready for his power. No matter who you are, even if you don't want to be in ministry, the kind of grace, excuse me, that will come upon you will transform you at once into a minister. Many people in the Bible were in the welfare department of their churches, but their hunger for God graduated them from welfare departments until they serve God. Lord, take my heart. Lord, take my heart. Put hunger in my heart that is greater than any other thing. Listen to me. If your pastor came up now and your pastor told you that 
the governor of this state has requested that he will have 10 minutes with five people here and grant them their desires you will be surprised the levels of lobbyings that will go through and then after that if you sit in the governor's office from morning and you hear that he's outside the country but you'll come back before evening do you know how grateful you will be sitting there for 12 hours and you will never complain and someone will come and say sorry oh you know how this is Okay, I mean, I'm more than grateful that the governor is coming. And all of a sudden, you hear the siren, and they say your governor is coming, and you a sigh of relief. The reward for your sitting in the morning. And he gives you 10 minutes of his time, and you go out rejoicing. Mommy, they've given me a job. And all your 12 hours waiting no longer counts. But when you spend time with God and you begin to frown, is because somehow you have indoctrinated yourself that God has a track record of wasting people's time. That every time I spend time with God, there are business people who sit in church and they are calculating what they would have gotten now. And it's paining them. My God, can you imagine? By now, I would have gotten this. If I sold one jerry can of that kerosene, pastor, I would have one jerry can. At least by now, I would have sold, I would have sold one and I would have made 40,000. And so they look at God like a scammer. Lord, you, you, you use service time to steal away my 40,000. And you see people angry. Brothers and sisters, God is calling us to return to a place of desperate hunger. Desperate hunger. Desperate hunger. Why will I pray when I think prayer is a waste of my time? Why will I fast? When I think my fasting activity is just a way to punish myself. We love the results that only hunger can bring. But many of us are not ready to pay that price to be hungry. I pray that there are people in this place tonight who are saying, Lord, I'm tired of struggling over something I know you can make easy for me. I rather spend time seeking you than spending time running around men who cannot help me. They promised me in January, this is October, I've not heard from them. Let me hear from you. Oh. If I hear from you, I must hear from every other man. I'm tired of roaming around begging. I will give you admission and he says, get out of my office. I will give you a job and after five years, you are still saying, uncle, help me. Why don't you go to God? God who can tell creation hear ye him and everywhere you go men must hear you because a divine verdict came from heaven when God says hear ye him man of God nobody can downplay you it's a lie a voice from heaven has acknowledged you who they will call a hustler until today because my brothers and my sisters it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrows hear me nigerians except the lord builds a house they labor in vain no that build it except the lord watches over a city that the watchmen watch it but in vain that we must get to a point in our lives where this is not just the issue of church alone this is not lord i'm loving you so that i will be a pastor this is not i'm loving you so that i will get a husband god is not a fool he will vet your motive until he sees himself in your heart hannah wanted a child but that child was to stop the mockery of penina and god says i won't give you a child because of that but she said, Lord, you need a prophet. Use my womb. And God said, that's it. That's what I'm looking for. A heart that is all about me. Man of God, hear me. The fame you are looking for and the power, the recognition, you will waste your time. It will never come. The secret is not in human connection. The secret is in the secret place. That when you remain in the secret place, you market yourself there. A track record. Oh God, for your glory. If everything about my life is that you be seen. My one desire 
is that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised my one desire not to be a pastor that you be praised not to be a celebrity that you be praised not just to be a millionaire a billionaire no my one desire my one desire is that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised I like Listen, listen to me very carefully. God is speaking to people here. There are people God is saying, my son, stop struggling. If you give me your heart, there is nothing I will not give you. you this, this labor will kill you for nothing. Years ago, the Lord told me, you've heard it in my teachings. Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. I have met kings, I have met nobles, I have met politicians, I have met people that my level of life should never afford me to lead. When you take him seriously, step back and watch that God arise for you. My call tonight is to tell you this thing is not just about miracles so it's not just about anointing it's not about i want to be the first in my family wonderful but tonight uh -uh. the lord this thing is truly not about me i love you and I seek you with my life. I will raise my children to seek you. You are not, you are not an alternative to employment. You are not an alternative to a failed marriage. You are not an alternative to a jobless person. No! You are not an alternative to... I, I, I just I, I'm free no one is inviting me to sing so let me use the time to seek God before an opportunity comes Moses, take off your shoes, for where you stand is holy ground. Listen, please listen to me. If I ask everyone here to write your prayer request, I can almost predict what is there. Apostle, as I'm standing right now, there is a bill of rent to pay. I know. We have a high priest who has been touched with the feelings of our infirmity. That's the definition of compassion. The ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity. God is not irresponsible. Apostle, I've written jam 10 times. Apostle, I graduated since 98. Apostle, I'm 40 and no man has come. I know. But can I tell you, there is a formula in the secret. Seek beyond his hand. Seek his heart. You don't seek a man's heart and it comes without his hand. All of him will come. You want miracles in your life. You want signs. You want to see the gifts of the Spirit work. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. The key is all of you given to all of him. This is more than just born again. 
This is more than a preacher. This is more than a prophet. This is more than an apostle. This is more than bringing offering in church. This is more than giving a car. This is more than giving your home for self-fellowship. This is coming to a point in your life where you say, Lord, what am I without you? You come to a point where you say, Lord, I'm not ashamed again. You are the only one that represents value to me. Everything minus you is nothing in my world. Everything minus you is nothing. I would throw the money a thousand times to prove I love you. I would throw the certificate a thousand times to prove I love you. I would throw my pride and everything. I cast my crowns before your mighty royalty. I am undone before the highest royalty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before the highest royalty. Very simple song. Says, I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before the highest royal. I cast my crowns before all my achievements, everything. The highest royalty. I am undone before. Are the kinds of experiences listen carefully we're about to pray this this any man that can assume this posture in the spirit you will attract God God will say I'm hearing something from the earth I'm hearing something from Ogun states that is calling me what is this sound of hunger what is this sound that is coming from this family a family that has never risen a family that the bar has been down who is this that is singing a song that their fathers did not sing. Who is this that is singing a song of surrender and worship? It takes hunger. It's more than just giving your life to Christ, my brothers and my sisters. It's more than just attending church. And ye shall seek me listen listen we're going to pray shortly but i know that some of you here listen carefully as you are looking at me god is telling you you are the salvation of a generation you are not just a preacher but god is saying the way you are going about it you will not be it like that you will not be it like that mama i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on this woman this woman now that i'm stretching my hands on in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands from here. I'm seeing that oil, like oil just coming on that woman. I don't know, this This looks like an elderly woman, but I'm seeing the grace of an intercessor. That's what God is giving this woman. A very strange grace that she's going to begin to have dreams, strange dreams and encounters in the spirit. Hallelujah! Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. Volume, my please. You will see it all. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to give everyone five minutes. Find a corner and cry your heart to God. Lay your golden crown and say, Lord, I, 
I'm sorry for lifting anything above you. Please cry your heart to your maker. This is not the issue of man of God. This is not the issue of prophet. This is not the issue of apostle. Find a corner and say, Lord, enough is enough. Just help those under the anointing. Everyone outside, inside. I cast my crowns, I lift my hands, I bow my heart, it's what I've come to do. I cast my crowns, I lift my hands, I bow my heart, it's what I've come to do. I cast my pride. I lift my achievements. I bow my heart. Shabaka to sekete, ebreke teke to kaseketa lakata. Shabaka to skabaka tos. Pray. Lord, you have my heart genuinely. Take everything, oh God. Take everything, oh God. Why will I ever exalt anything above you? Why will I ever exalt ministry above you? Why will I ever exalt my career above you? Lord, are you not God of all? Are you not the king of the universe? Whatever you cannot give me, I cannot get. Kabarakote shakate balakata. Embrekete kete kete kete. Anything you do not give me, I cannot get. Whatever you do not make of my life, I cannot be.
Take my heart and mold it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. For you are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. I'm seeking you as a precious joy. Not to give up, I'll be careful. You are my all in all. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my only in all. I'm seeking you as a precious joy. Not to give up, I'll be a fool. You are my own. One more minute, you are praying. One more minute, you are crying to me. This is what the Bible calls surrender. This is the secret to the heart of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen. A few more minutes and we're done tonight. I want to make an altar call now. Those of us in front, if, if we can just gently shift. We're going to make an altar call. Two altar calls in one, and then I'll pray for you for tonight. There are people here, and, and I don't want you to be emotional. Most times when we make altar call, people are just emotional and they just run out carelessly. But hear me, my brothers and my sisters. There are people inside, outside, here. While we were worshipping, the Spirit of God was speaking to you and saying, how long will I continue to call? There are people here who are saying, Apostle, I've been around the things of God, though, but I've never truly, genuinely handed my life. I've thought it's just a church thing. It's just a four square thing. There are others who are saying, I can't lie to myself. I need to run to Him. Now, because I also want to pray for a few people. I'm just going to count one to four. Whether you are inside or outside, don't hit anybody. If you know the Spirit of God is speaking to you, if you are not sure, just remain on your seat. But you know God is speaking to you. I want you to run and stand here now. I'm just counting one to four and that will be it. 
inside outside run like there's fire on the mountain one two don't wait for anybody to come and be the first person this is serious business tonight three young and old together lord win this war in my life hmm. some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears don't be ashamed of your tears he does not condemn you but i tell you he will make a radical wonder from your life someone is still sitting down and the lord is saying swallow your pride rush join them quickly apostle i'm not sure if i'm born again or not quickly join them don't wait for me to tell you what you pray let your tears pray let your heart pray before i lead you in a central prayer you are before jesus jesus son of god I believe in you. Ah. I believe in you. They may not believe, but Jesus, I believe. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. One more time, sing it from the depth of your heart. Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe. Yes, Lord. You're the Son of God. Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord. There are people here crying. There are people here expressing their heart. I want to lead you to a prayer. Listen. The Lord Jesus Christ is in this place and my brothers and my sisters mothers aunties uncle children as i lead you to make this prayer some of you are rededicating your life don't be ashamed of your tears this is not to condemn you this is to introduce you to a reality now for all of you who are kneeling in front i want to lead you through a central prayer and if you can i want you to pray this prayer with all your heart you are not reciting a poem after a man of God. It's a genuine statement that will initiate you into the greatest experience in your life. All of you in front, I want you to say this after me passionately and genuinely. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Say, Lord Jesus. Look at my heart is already going. Look at this, my little children with their hearts genuinely i mean i just feel like carrying these little children say it again lord jesus tonight i believe that you are the son of god the only one who can save me who can help me who can lift me i come to you just as i am i've done my best i need your help i hand my life over to you 
and I receive of your life. I declare from tonight that I'm a child of God. Jesus is Lord, is Savior, is King of my heart and my life. I declare that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. From today, I am a child of God, now and forever. Amen. Listen, I congratulate all of you. I know that you have probably come out for many other altar calls, but you will know that what you have done tonight is a remarkable experience. Now, very quickly, just listen. Okay, this is what I want all of you to do. Please, let's be fast with them so that they can come. I want to pray now. Now, all of you, just follow. Who is waving his hands? Okay, there's, there's this our uncle waving his hands. All of you, just follow them. They will have a word with you very quickly, very quickly, and you'll be back. Can we honor them, everybody? Let's celebrate them as they go. While they are there, I will give you two prayer points, and then I will pray. Something is about to change in someone's life. Hallelujah. Everyone say after me in the name of Jesus. Come on, do we have people that pray here? Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every mountain standing before me and the next level of victory hear the word of the Lord you must go down now lift your voice and begin to pray are there people of prayer in this place Mountain must give way. Alabakoto sopra katabala. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say in the name of Jesus. Every spiritual dimension destined for me to step into, I declare that this night I'm stepping into it open your mouth and pray dimensions of visions dimensions of prophecy dimensions of power dimensions of favor help that gentleman pray just do what I'm asking you to do Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
in this few minutes your life will change in a way that will surprise you you see my brothers and my sisters there's something about this God that we serve have you heard that the word of God is quick and powerful that the word of God can come in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and your life has changed in a moment and you are carrying a new level of anointing that you walk to this place and an ordinary person but you are walking out with a prophetic love. Amen. I want to minister to you a few minutes we are going to have time tomorrow there's tomorrow morning and evening please whatever you do do not miss the evening session but I'm going to pray for you I may not have all the time tonight to just prophesy and pray but I, I came here I, I knew in my heart that someone's life someone has been praying and fasting and saying Lord I, I, my life must change I'm about to pray for you now praise the Lord please all those who are under the anointing the ushers are few I understand if someone falls under the anointing close to you please whether you are an usher or not just help them okay so everybody is doing the work of an usher so that they don't injure themselves if I instruct that you bring them out you just help to bring them out if I don't say that you just keep them there I want to pray for you now. I'm seeing in the spirit. The Lord is opening my eyes. And I'm seeing, I'm telling you, all kinds. I'm seeing like a, you know how a mist is. Just hovering around from outside, coming here. And I want to pray now. There are people that I'm seeing like a sword and I'm seeing written on it, breakthrough. If that sword comes upon you, then things are opening up. I want to pray. I want you to bring all those people outside right now as I pray. Please walk with the guys. Let them know what to do. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands now. Inside, outside, I declare. I'm seeing 24, the number 24. There are 24 people that this grace is coming on right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, right now, inside, outside, bring them out. I command that grace for breakthrough. Every yoke that holds you must go now. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus. This is a conference of fire. Enough is enough. It's time for you to be shifted to a dimension. That fire is still falling. I declare, I declare, anyone who has been bound among these 24 people outside, bring those outside. That grace is falling on you outside. should break those chains fire is falling from heaven now every chain that has held anyone under the sound of my voice I stand by this apostolic and prophetic unction chains be broken now chains be broken now chains be broken now be broken now Kapakoto secretary outside chains are breaking chains are breaking 
Chains are breaking. Chains are breaking. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every the chain of witchcraft breaks now, breaks now, the chain of witchcraft breaks now, breaks now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there a name like Ola Tunji? Is there something like that? Is it Tunji? Ola Tunji? Who is that? Ah, it's even the pastor. I'm hearing Ola Tunji. No, the Ola Tunji, I'm, 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 I'm seeing a gentleman. You are wearing like ox blood, ox blood shirt. Your name is Ola Tunji. Who is that? Ox like ox blood, red. Is there someone? No. What's your name? Huh? Ola Tunji. Ola Tunji. Come. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Who is Olua Kemi? Olua Kemi. Olua Kemi. Olua Kemi. There is another mother just like you. Here, her name is Kemi too. Olua Kemi, who is that person? I give the chains on me. Hallelujah. Johnson. Johnson. Who is Johnson? Johnson. I'm hearing a name, Johnson. I want to pray for you. We'll take our time. Johnson, come. Your life is about to change, sir. I don't know you look at me sir but the lord is saying i should tell you between now and 31st of october the kind of open door that god will bring for you will you believe what i'm saying in jesus name may that grace come upon you my friend come the lord is saying that he wants to deliver your family i'm seeing strong affliction in your family huh is that true like, where are you coming from huh i came from ibadan you came from ibadan I want to pray for you. Where are your people? They are in Ibadan. They are in Ibadan. Tell them that a man of God said between now and November uh, that the yoke is broken and everybody will rise in that family. In the name of Jesus, I declare it's over right now. Mama, let me pray for you. Let me pray for this mama first. Ma, please look at me. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Let someone use the mic for your business. Say in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I declare that the yoke, that the yoke is, broken. is broken. Say it again. In the, In the name, name of Jesus, Jesus I, I declare that the, the yoke, yoke is, is broken. broken. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you. It's over right now. The yoke is broken now and broken forever. I'm seeing a court case. There's, there's a family having a court case. This is, this is something that has to do, I don't know if it's something that has to do with land. A court case that has to do with land um, I don't know if there's anybody here with that situation a court case something that has to do with land and I'm seeing that if I don't pray I'm, I'm not insulting the judicial system but I'm seeing something that they are bribing a judge and is turning things around and the Lord wants to turn that thing around right now please come make sure you don't tell lies make sure you come here who is this that's the man you, you are the one in court. No, my family, my family. Your family, Obadina. Where? At Ibadan. What's the case about? Um, the landowner said, um, the, um people are saying they are the owner of the land instead of them saying my dad is the owner. Same issue, sir. It's my, it's my sister. She has a court case. We've been praying and trusting God to give, to grant her. Um, Hold on. I'm seeing, the Lord is asking me to stand here. I'm seeing there's someone, the, the power of God is coming on someone here. 
and I'm seeing the Lord is saying that he's bringing I'm hearing lifting, 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 just right here. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord just, I will come back to you, sir. I'm just walking with what? Right now, somebody, just within here, the power of God is coming. It's not something you can do anything about. It's, it's the sent word of God. Lord, I declare, where is that person? Right now, in the name of Jesus, may the anointing of the Spirit of God locate that person, and that in locating that person, the Bible says turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev it says when the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream and said they among the hidden the Lord has done great things for us it says the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad in Jesus name this leave the issue of your family first I want to pray for you I'm seeing the Lord imparting upon you the spirit of wisdom huh? In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, let that grace come upon this young man right now. And I pray we turn this court case to the favor of this family. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There's someone outside. Please bring the lady for me outside. The power of God is coming on someone mightily outside. Carry the person and bring the person. Right now. I, I just saw fire outside looking for someone. There is a strange anointing that is coming on someone outside. Sir, please hold my hands. On behalf of your sister, in the name of Jesus, here at Four Square, we agree and we declare in Jesus' name that it is over. I have to pray for you too. Look at me, sir. You need, the Lord needs to do a serious financial miracle in your life. Don't feel embarrassed. Eh? I'm not embarrassing you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, open doors. Open doors. In the name of Jesus. Open doors. Tunde. 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 You are able. Rain and my eagle. What do you do? Rabbi, I'm on a plate for now. That's what I'm saying. If I told you you would celebrate Christmas with a job that will surprise you, will you believe it? Yes, I believe so. You believe it? I believe so. The Bible says, believe the Lord your God, so shall you be established. He said, believe his prophet. God will never tell you what you can do. He will tell you what he can do. When God talks to you and you can do what he's saying, it's not him you had. Rain and my it's not about what you studied, my brother. The Lord is going to transform your life and you will transform your family. You believe that? Yes. Hold my hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, by this grace and by this anointing, change this brother's life. What do you do, sir? I'm in sir, I'm seeing you with food. I'm seeing you wearing apron. I'm in HR. You are what? In HR. A HR. I'm seeing... Please help them. Cover. Please just help them. The lady should know what to do, please. I'm seeing you with apron and food. Listen carefully. And I don't know what you do now, but I'm seeing that the breakthrough that God is bringing for you 
has something to do with i don't know if it's a catering project or something that you will handle and manage because i'm seeing you wearing an apron and i'm seeing you with food and i'm saying what is this man doing with food but i want to pray for you you see the things of the spirit may not make sense please don't just come out at random in the name of jesus christ hi i need to pray there is a banker here if i don't pray for you i'm seeing them sack you this is something that has to do with money a transaction that is affecting your unit if i don't pray for you this is a bulk transaction and some of the people that are doing that transaction they are 419 people if i don't pray for you now there's going to be trouble where do you work please don't come out here and tell lies huh you, union um, bank yes where do you work i'm seeing an elephant on you where do you work first bank first bank Blessed be the name of the Lord. Stand up, sir. I'm going to pray for you. Huh? That in the name of Jesus Christ. Mighty God. Mighty God. Mama, please come. You are our mother. We are going to pray for you. The Lord. Whose mother is this? Because I saw light from you to her. That's why I drew her close to you. Is she your mother? She's your mother. Ah, look at this. Mama, God will take shame and reproach Amen. from your family. Amen. You believe that, Mama? Amen. You are an old woman. You must eat the fruit of your labor. Amen. Listen, let me speak to every parent here. The spirit that makes you cry before your children are born and cry again even while they grow, I command that spirit to leave you in the name of Jesus. Amen. That a mother will labor to give birth to a child and then the child comes to cause pain by the manipulation of wicked spirits in the name of Jesus I say it again if there is anyone in any family causing pain for any parent I decree by the fire from this conference let there be total deliverance for that person This lady, your family is free. That lady on blue, you. I'm seeing fire on you. In the name of Jesus, I declare liberty now for that family. This woman loves her son so much. My, my, my friend, look at me. How long have you been in the bank? I've been in the bank since 2019. For? Since 2019. Look at me. Go and write it. The promotion that is coming for you will bring tears to your eyes. Go and write it. And my friend, please take care of this woman. Eh? Give her your best. Mama, you will live long in the name of Jesus. The Lord is going to promote you. Huh? And you are going to have many things doing, going abroad and coming back. Because I'm seeing you inside a plane. And the Lord is saying he will make this happen by his spirit. We have to hurry up now. We will we'll dedicate my, my... Please hold my hands the witchcraft that is on this woman and this family in the name of jesus christ i command every power that is not of god to let you and let your family go free now in the name of jesus i stood there and i saw this woman inside a coffin i'm not a prophet of doom don't get me wrong i'm just praying for you i'm seeing this woman inside a coffin ah oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your victory in the name of Jesus, I speak over your life and I decree and declare by the hand of God, you are delivered from the plague of death. In the name of Jesus Christ. I can't remember why I called you people out quite honestly. No, no, no. For those, it, it's, it's not just everybody who fell under the anointing I'm speaking to. You see, it's just... You are Tunde. I'm going to pray for you. You are Tunde. What do you do, sir? I'm an estate surveyor. You are an estate surveyor. An estate surveyor. The contract you are pursuing, have you gotten it? No, not yet. The man has refused to attend to you. Yes, sir. Can we pray that he will attend to you? Amen. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do? 
Jesus. Sing this song and see God delivering your family. You're the name above every other name. What can you change? They call your father Elder. Who is that? It's like a nickname. They call him Elder. Where? Huh? Adwick. Where? Adwick. Where is that? They call him Elder. I want to pray for you because the devil wants to take your father's life. And the Lord wants to prolong. I'm seeing light from you to that gentleman holding his hands. What did they call your father? Huh? Elder, come. Because I'm seeing that, I'm standing here and I'm seeing the same thing I'm praying for her and the Lord is saying, pray for him too. You are Listen, at the end of this meeting, someone here, the next time you climb on stage, my brothers and my sisters, you will see the glory of God upon your life and ministry in a way and manner that will surprise you. Help them please. You think I'm joking. I'm saying it again. That in the name that is every man of God here and woman of God here, I'm speaking by the Spirit. The finger of God that is able to draw spiritual virtues from the realm of the Spirit upon a man and upon a woman. I know that there is a session for impartation, but I'm praying now. May that grace find you. My dear, in the name of Jesus, we declare the devil will not take your father's Amen. life. And my friend, the devil will not take your father's life. Amen. Five ladies, no marriage, completely in that family. Nobody is married. Completely. Five ladies. One, two, three, four, five. I'm seeing this in the vision that the Lord is showing me. There are five ladies. Who is that, please? Five ladies. When you find them, are you sure? Please make sure that. I, I, I pray for all of you that I called out. Mama, please come. No, no, no. Please stand up. Ma. Please stand up. Please stand up. I want to pray for you. Look at this. Look at this. The anointing of the Spirit is on you. Mama, you are going to start having one prophetic dreams. You are going to start seeing in the spirit in a very strange way. In this woman will, will start having dreams. You lie down and dream. You call the person and tell the person. It will happen exactly the way you saw it. It's a grace. Sir, you are climbing a ladder and that ladder is breaking again. You are climbing and it's breaking. Please come, sir. Can I, can I talk to you? I hope you will not be embarrassed. What do you do, sir? I'm a banker. You are a banker. You are climbing a ladder. The ladder is breaking. You are climbing a ladder. The ladder is breaking. But we are going to pray. Because the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. See, anything that makes you taste good things and go down is the devil. Did you hear what I said? Yes. That, that you will stand and God will do something in your family before you finish testifying, everything goes down. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you, sir. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may my God visit you. Amen. May my God lift you. Amen. That embargo is gone forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is someone here. You have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. We'll pray tomorrow. Because I'm hearing the cry of children. Come. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sir, I am seeing these same faces that I'm seeing in your house dedicating a child. This is your wife. Is this your wife? You write it that I said it. 
I wish we had the photo. I would have shown you. Two families. Men, well, many of you follow our ministry and you've heard the testimony. Look at me. If you do not have a child, God did not send me. Look at, look at what is happening to her. Look at, look at what is happening to her. I'm seeing what is tying your womb. I release you. Just like the prophet spoke to the woman. I don't care how many years. That's not the issue. There were many widows in Zarephath, but what, to none was Elijah sent. God has sent me to you. Madam, come. Carry your child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, sir. In the name of Jesus, this is over. Over. I don't care what this, I don't care whether you have a womb or not. Carry your child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at what is happening to her. That yoke. My sister, how long have you been married? Two years. You are trusting God too? Come. Is your husband here? No, sir. Look, let me tell you, please. This one is no longer the issue of four square church meeting. Invite everybody within this area. Carry them tomorrow and bring them here. Are we together now? And tell them God is visiting your city and changing. You know people that have been in age-long situations. Don't be selfish. Don't sit down and allow people to come and miss their day of visitation. Imagine that if this woman didn't come to church now. Mighty God. Lord, we love you. Be glorified. Men of God, be careful when God begins to do these kinds of things through your life. Because this is the secret to the fall of many. When we see things like this, it's usually enjoyable to look like a celebrity. But be wise enough to say be glorified. Be wise enough to let men know that there is nothing you have that was not given. And there is no devil that will stop your result. Is someone learning something tonight? My sister, if I were to ask you whether you have a baby girl or boy, what would you say? I have both. Huh? <laughs> Two of them. The man that married is a wise man. Let's pray for you. You believe God does miracles? Yes, sir. There is something that needs to go out of your stomach. I won't say more than that. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, this is what is stopping your child. We have to pray. In the name of Jesus, put your hand there. Father, do a miracle for this woman. Amen. You will remember that you came for first prayer conference. Look at this. It's over. That's it. Gone forever. You are trusting God too? She came very away from Oyo. From Oyo? With her husband. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb? Oh dear. Do you think that God is so wicked to gather a meeting like this and waste your time? If you were God, will you see this kind of sacrifice and not bless them? Now you be Almighty God. You're not a man. You be my Lord. You know be my Now you be God. you be God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you now. The Lord is showing me a vision. There is someone outside. You are a tall gentleman. You are wearing a yellow jersey. Like a yellow... It looks like a polo. I think outside there. You are a tall gentleman. You are wearing a yellow... Is there someone like that? Please run and come quickly. Your life is about to change. Who is that? Is he from outside? Is he from outside? Where were you? Outside. What do you do, my friend? I'm an environmental consultant. You are? Environmental consultant. I work in a company. I need to pray for you. Things are not working, eh? Don't be embarrassed. 
things are not working. Look at me. Where is your mother? Go and tell your mother that the Lord said for her sake, he will never let you cry. You believe what I'm saying? I'm going to pray for you. I want you to count from next week and see what God begins to do. I know you have seen little bit of favor, but sit back and watch tears of joy from your eyes as God favors you. In the name of Jesus, I release that grace for you. Please, I want to pray. We'll soon round up. I know our time is gone, but let's, for God's sake, attend to these people that are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I will pray for you. Don't worry. You, this is the husband, sir, all the way from Oyo, sir. I respect you and thank you for coming. I want you to know that no matter what the problem is, we are humans. And after a prolonged, do you know it was the delay of the bridegroom that made the virgins to sleep? If the bridegroom came early, all ten, they were all virgins. There was just one thing that caused that trouble, delay. The Bible says the rod, help this person please. God is doing something in her life now. The Bible says the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest they dip their hands in iniquity. When the bridegroom delayed, he made the five people to miss it. That means when things come early in your life, there are some probabilities that will be avoided. You see, I'm speaking parables. Are we together now? But God is merciful and God is kind and he will give you miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, not just is God restoring and giving you a child. I'm seeing God do something supernatural in your finances. Please, I want you to believe it. In the name of Jesus. Madam, put your hand on your stomach. Hold my hands. Lord Jesus, are you not the giver of children? He said, children, I heritage from the Lord. Not heritage from a man. They only pass through a man. All good things come from God. Every good and perfect gift. Is a child a good and perfect gift? That means it's com it comes from above. And in the name of Jesus, may no devil stop you. Carry your child. Help her. It's over. Watch your wife. Look at what God is doing. You see that? I command that spirit to leave this woman now. Sir, let me pray for you. Please hold my hands. I release an anointing for favor upon you right now. Receive that grace right now. This grace for favor, let it speak for you. In Jesus' name, you are for yourself, you. If you are standing here for fruit of the womb, make sure you are married. Otherwise, you are standing for someone. Please. Are we to you? Yourself. Yes, sir. Okay, this is you. Husband. Yourself and your husband. Yes, sir. How long have you been married? Five years. Five years. No child. Tomorrow, I will tell you why Satan is afraid. Because the more bodies we have on earth, the more space we give God to find expression. A body has thou prepared. Remember, even the body of a dead man, Satan was interested in it. A man had died, but Satan still wanted the body. Look at this wonderful lady. And for those of you who are married here, you will know that by the time... Is no matter how you love your wife or your husband, there are some delays that when they are prolonged, seeds will be sown. Let's be very honest with ourselves here. Is that true? That's why we must cancel it. Because the Bible says the rod of the wicked should not rest on the lot of the righteous. Why? Lest they dip their hands. They didn't plan it. Where is he? He's in Germany. It's in Kebi. Germany. Germany. I will talk to you. I will, not, I will not talk here now. But we need to pray. Okay? Don't be afraid. It's not something I'll discuss here now. Okay? So, but in the name of Jesus, come. May the Lord give you a miracle. May the Lord keep you. You know that prayer. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. It's a powerful prayer. It's a power. Anybody that loves God, that prayer is a powerful prayer. Let me say it again. 
lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil father by your mercy in the name of jesus the devil will not take advantage of anyone here Amen. in jesus name may the lord open your womb you too how many of you are standing here for fruit of the womb let's just be quickly then i will just pray fruit of the womb pastor look what god is using you and the church to do imagine if this man of god did not obey god you see why obedience is powerful by one man's disobedience everyone suffered that means disobedience is selfishness because you are putting others too in trouble that means obedience is love because you are causing others to rise because of you let's pray you are her husband what do you do sir ah, there are many bankers in this church you are a banker too is that not true you are in zenith bank but things are not working come how will i look at someone wearing polo and say you're a banker my brother don't be embarrassed huh but there is a grace that teaches men to say no you hear what i just said there is a grace the bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death may god grant us the courage to say no to even some good things there are good things that you need to say no so that you can get the will of god if god wants to give you one million next week satan will give you five hundred thousand today five hundred thousand is not bad but he's using five hundred thousand to stop you from getting one million you will need to say no five hundred thousand is good but let me keep it so that god will give you one million in jesus name sir let's pray we have to hurry up in the name of jesus hold my hands just hold my hands shout jesus as loud as you can that's it it's gone that's your miracle my friend in the name of jesus sir the lord is opening doors for you in jesus name i pray you are married this is your husband husband please come you are a very good man come you are a good man you are trusting god too both of you are you walking yes where i'm seeing the lord is going to lift you beyond that amen God is going to use one of your uncle to help you. Amen. You see, let me tell you, destiny helpers never help you just because they are close to you. They must be anointed to help you. You've heard me say, everybody who helps you has a relative who is in need. They don't just come to help you just because they are close. Don't just get angry and say, you are close to me, you can help me. I don't think it's wise. Do you know that I believe that Elijah passed many other widows and just greeted them. He was on his way to Zarephath because he was sent to her. Are we together now? Hi. Testimony. 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 This is what I see with this family, sir. Testimony. My sister, in Jesus' name, I hold your hands and I pray. The God of Hannah, may he visit you now. I'm seeing something leaving your stomach. Look what is happening to your wife. Let it be over, oh God. In Jesus' name. Sir, favor upon your life. In Jesus' name. I'm just praying for those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Uh -uh. Please don't just come up. We have to be well behaved here. If not, there will be chaos. Huh? Okay, this, I will just pray generally. Please. So that we'll be able to end today. There's tomorrow and there's evening. Right? We will pray. We will rubbish the devil in this city in a way and a manner. Huh? Madam? Hi. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing the face of a very old woman. You're married? You're trusting God too? Put your hand on your stomach. Lord Jesus, please, let's be careful. Eh? Just, just follow them. In Jesus' name, 
I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, let it be over now. May God open your womb in Jesus' name. You too? How many years? Your brother, where is he? He is busy for school. You don't have a child? I have. You have two, but you want another one. One boy. Eh? Is it not a boy? That's what I'm telling you. It's a boy. You are trusting. <laughs> Whether a boy or a girl, you want one more. Ah, husband is the one driving me. No, that devil is a liar. Where is you? Husband, please come. You can't drive me and stay in one place. In the name of Jesus. Look, you see the anointing on her? That's the grace. This thing is a yoke in the family. Let it break now. Look at, look at it. It's over. That's it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying. Ah, is this man a banker too? Huh? That profession. You are an accountant. This church is a church of accountants and we are going to write a signboard and say if you are an accountant, you are invited. We are going to pray. Sir, a friend is going to help you. You are going to get a very big a very big contract. Yes. I'm, I would not say what God did not ask me to say. In the name of Jesus Christ. But in Jesus name, your wife, especially for her brother, six years, no child. Let it be broken and let it be over now. I pray for all of you. Please. You see, if we do it like this, eh, we're going to do, we'll turn this meeting into a vigil. You understand? I know that you are trusting God for grace, but I just want you to believe. Huh? Please believe. Please believe. Please believe. Don't worry. I want you to believe. Look at You see it? So that's the end of it. That's your child now. God is giving you. Look what God is doing. You too. It's over. I take away that embargo. I stretch my hands. Lord, you sent me. When I sent you, lackest thou anything? Look at what God is doing. One by one, you see him visiting them. I decree and declare right now. How shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? And he said, the power of the highest. The power of the highest. Every womb that is closed, I command right now. An ordinance in the realm of help them, my God. Look what is happening. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. I command the wombs open now. Open now. Open now. Open now. Every spirit responsible, I challenge it and I curse it now. I speak to you as a servant of God. According to the time of life, return with your miracle children. Return with your miracle children. Return with your miracle children. In the name of Jesus. We have to close. There is someone that has been missing from a family. Is it someone's brother? This is at least, this is more than like two years. The person has been missing. He's not dead. We call him back home. In the name of Jesus Christ. He is not dead though. Who is that? Come. How long? Like four years. Like four years. He's not dead. We call him back home. Amen. In Jesus' name. Huh? My brother. We have to pray. In the name of Jesus. We have, there's still a session tomorrow and a session next tomorrow. But I pray for you right now. Sir, November is your month of laughter. This man, I don't know you, sir, but November is your month of laughter. The Lord is going to surprise you in a way and manner that you did not expect. Father, we thank you for what you have done tonight. I pray, those outside, lift your hands to and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, between tonight and tomorrow morning and tomorrow evening some of you as you are leaving now you will return back with tears of joy
in the name that is above all names let the angels of encounter let the angels some of you tonight as you go to bed god will open up the secrets of your destiny in the name of jesus christ some of you as you go to bed tonight god will open to you your assignment in intricate details some of you as you go to bed tonight you are going to have dreams you will see people giving you encounters and pouring oil upon your head every trouble you left at home to come here i speak to you as you go back home meet a testimony waiting for you in the name of jesus christ wave your hands and give jesus praise